unusable information. Joining me now is from the Center for Renewing America, senior fellow and former Virginia Attorney General Ken Cuccinelli. Ken, we want to talk about the border region, which I know you're hot on, but I got to yep. ask you about this. You're, you're a former lawyer who dealt with, with these issues before. Yep. What do you make of this? The, the latest headline is that uh, Elon Musk says it appears that Twitter is dramatically understating the proportion of spam and false accounts that were represented in, in the, uh, the original count. What do you make of all this? Yeah, well, first of all, as somebody who's done mergers and acquisitions in the past, he protected himself with the requirements before handing over the cash to buy Twitter, and he's invoking those protective clauses to get out of the deal. And he is saying that Twitter is uh, basically not what it appears, that many of its accounts are spam accounts, that they are not freely providing information, and when you're paying a premium, you expect to get that information. Uh, he's, and now, I believe the board of directors is frankly exposed on two sides. Their shareholders have lost the opportunity of the value uh, offered in the mm -hmm. Musk deal, which was a premium price for them. And two, Twitter's been exposed and their board has been exposed as not doing its job. Wow. Um, that they have um, really uh, been falsely suggesting they're bigger than they are, and advertisers may have claims as well that come out of this. So this is only the beginning of a whole new set of news related to Twitter. Well, uh, to put a, a dollar figure on it, I mean, he was offering, what, about $54 yeah. a share. It's now, it da it's down 5% right. today, but again, the market closed before this news came out. Uh, it's down yeah, to 30, $36.80. Well, it'll crater on Monday when it, when it starts trading again. But you right, think that correct. there will be lawsuits yep. both from, from investors, from stockholders, uh, and from, from people that have been dealing with the company? Yeah, stockholders are more likely. Um, but the, the reality is Twitter sells views. And if those views to advertisers um, are not real people, then they have been defrauded. And uh, so those, the potential for those claims exists. Those are going to be what I might call friendlier because it's, mm -hmm. it's business dealings between parties that may want to continue to do business, uh, much more so than the shareholder suits where they'll be, they'll be out for blood. Oh, they'll be ticked. They'll be ticked. And does this mean that the, that the, yes. the management, the entire management team is, is subject to these lawsuits and they have to pay it out of their own pockets well, or what? Well, every company will have insurance for this sort of thing, but they'll be the named defendants, yes. It'll, you know, it'll wow. be their name and their head on the block, even if they're indemnified for it, which they will be. Yeah. Uh, no, no corporation goes forward yes. without director and officer insurance any longer. But it also exposes, frankly, the lack of applicable professionalism of the board members. I mean, this board has skewed more and more political rather than being a business board of directors. And the weakness of that is being exposed dramatically today. Absolutely. Well, it's going to be fascinating to see what happens on Monday and, and, and what happens to the competitors of Twitter, because there are some, there are some interesting right. competitors now, particularly ones that are affiliated with the former president that, that uh, could take advantage of this. All right, let's move to the border, if you don't mind. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's clear as, as uh, the light of day that everybody's overwhelmed by what's happening at the border. Um, yes. Th the question is whether what is happening there it could actually be defined as an invasion. There's a lot of questions about it constitutionally, politically. You think it, it is an invasion. Explain why. Right. Sure. So I, I actually thought it was an invasion a number of years ago that w whether the federal government is doing its job of protecting the border is a secondary question. It's just more dramatic here with an administration that is not protecting the border. So the states are left on their own. And at the end of Article I, the Founding Fathers, and James Madison spoke directly to this, left the states the ability to protect themselves. They don't need congressional permission, and the wording is, when actually invaded. And they don't define invasion. 
def invasion is left to be defined by the state. And that may sound strange to some people today, but it's easier to understand if you go back 200 years plus to the beginning of the Constitution. Then Georgia was the southwest border. They couldn't pick up the phone and call George Washington and then fly some troops down, not that there were many troops at the time, to deal with any incursion. The governor of the state, who's the commander in chief of that state, um, made the decision and dealt with them himself. And the advances in technology and transportation don't change who has the legal authority to make that decision. The founders clearly expected um, reasonableness and political restraint to restrain mm. um, unreasonable claims of invasion. But this is how the border was defended for 100 years before the Border Patrol. Yeah. This is not new. It's just never By been thought about state. before. Well, one, one final question. Jonathan Turley, as I'm sure you've seen, has, has written, he said that there's a big difference between yeah. an invasion from a foreign government, which he says is what the Constitution right. was talking about, and a collection of migrants coming from different places to become a part of this nation. You say what to that? Yeah, I have a lot of respect for Jonathan Turley, but he's wrong in this instance. And um, if you look at the Arizona Attorney General Mark Burnovich's legal opinion, he addresses this directly. He points to none other than James Madison, who wrote Article 1, um, as using an example of just smugglers, which uh, as falling under the jurisdiction of this provision we're talking about is qualifying as an invasion. And smugglers, the drug cartels, aren't just crossing the border back and forth, they're running the entire operation with an intelligence mm. network and so forth. So, uh, like I said, I respect Jonathan Turley greatly, but I don't agree that he has uh, taken all the information into account yeah. for this. It isn't just nation states, and it's never been that way. Well, and it's clear that right now the federal government is not fulfilling its role in terms of protecting True. states from what's happening at the border. So Clearly. something has to be done. Ken, thank you so much for uh, giving us your insights into the Twitter My stuff. Pleasure. I appreciate it.